Welcome to The Alternative Investor. Infrastructure often comes up in the context of economic development and in some cases political discussions. It's also a fertile area for investment. Institutional investors have long included infrastructure as part of their allocations, usually through private funds. Over the past decade, however, the market has opened up to individual investors through growth in listed infrastructure funds. With emphasis on infrastructure increasing, what opportunities are there for investors when adding infrastructure to their portfolios. I spoke to Oket Doya, who is the head of credit at Sunlam Investments for more. Asset management or the fund management industry really has a key role to play. And I want to start off by saying that in the first instance, the funding requirement when it comes to the government's plans with regards to infrastructure investment is absolutely you know, huge. We've seen recently the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure published a document called the National Infrastructure Plan 2050. So this is really their plan with regards to investment in infrastructure over the next 20 or 30 years. Now the funding requirement according to that document is around 6 trillion rand with a shortfall expected of about 2 trillion rand. So it's expected that the private sector would need to step up to fill that gap of about 2 trillion rand. Now that's a lot of money and that would need to come from the banks as well as the asset management or the fund management industry. So that's very important. The fund managers would need to really upskill themselves so that they're in a position to assess infrastructure projects and then allocate money towards those projects, you know, the suitable and the appropriate uh, projects. Right. The other thing is that, um, sorry, just lastly, I, th I think one important thing is that, you know, in order for us to have any chance of delivering on these, you know, very ambitious infrastructure goals successfully, I think there's a, a healthy relationship needed between the public and the private sector. And again, there I think the fund managers have a, have a key role to play. Right. So are you seeing that increased appetite uh, in funds uh, to participate in infrastructure development? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, we've seen internationally that infrastructure as an asset class has developed very nicely. And I think South Africa you know, it's just a few years behind that international curve and locally we are starting to see an increase in appetite for infrastructure investment. I think as, you know, the local investors see the benefits of including infrastructure in a well diversified uh, retirement fund, you know, the, the appetite is starting to increase. Um, you know, some of those benefits just very quickly, um, you know, the, the, these returns that you can earn from infrastructure investments tend to be uncorrelated with other asset classes. So you get long-term stable inflation beating returns that are uncorrelated with the likes of, you know, listed, listed equity, et cetera. So, um, you know, those benefits are starting to flow through and, and, and hence the increased appetite. Right. So building on that then, um, you know, in having uh, infrastructure in one's portfolio, who exactly is it for, like in terms of uh, one's risk tolerance here? Yeah, so there are, you know, um, infrastructure is not a homogenous asset class. You can invest in either the equity, so in other words, you actually own these projects, or you can provide debt funding to these projects, you know, and the risk profile between those two would be quite different. You can also, um, you know, fund these projects at a very early stage when the risks would still be high. There could be, you know, a lot of construction risk in these projects, or you could decide to get involved a little bit later when, um, you know, not of, a lot of these risks have been mitigated and these projects have entered a stable operational phase. So it really depends on the risk appetite of the investor. Um, you know, but we're seeing the, uh, uh, you know, a key role to, to play for retirement funds that are looking for long-term stable returns, you know, to get involved at a stage where there's good visibility on the cash flows of these underlying projects and, um, you know, really benefiting, like I said earlier, you know, from these stable long-term returns. Yeah. What are some of the risks that one needs to be aware of? I mean, it sounds exciting. And it also at the same time, um, you're doing a, a big role of good, you know, investing in a social or economic infrastructure, which is great for our economy. But what is it that you need to keep in mind when it comes to the risk factors here? No, I think it's it's important to understand that investing in, in infrastructure is a, is a lot more complex than, for example, investing in listed equity. You know, if you want to enlist, if, if you want to invest in listed equity listed on the JSE stock exchange, you know, you can do a desktop analysis and very quickly, you know, if you see value in a specific share, you can buy the share very quickly. And if you don't like the share anymore, you can sell it, you know, very quickly as well. 
Whereas with infrastructure, you know, there's uh, there's quite long lead times in the project development, you know, and and quite a few projects, you know, don't make it past the early stages. You know, they don't make it past, you know, successfully being implemented. So it's it's important to to be in a position where you can assess these underlying projects very well. You know, you need to consider the structural risks that are involved. Um, you know, all the counterparties that are involved, you know, the, 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 the EEPC contractor, you know, these are the guys that are doing the engineering, the procurement and the construction. You know, do they have the capability to successfully deliver, you know, on a project of this scale and complexity? You know, that's one very important thing. But then even once you've completed the construction phase, you know, do you have someone that can run this facility successfully, you know, potentially for 30, 40 years, you know? So there are quite a few risks that need to be taken into consideration when, when these investments are made. So let's talk about Sunlam uh, Investments Infrastructure uh, Sustainable, rather Sustainable Infrastructure Fund. What's the mandate here? Yeah, so we are looking and, you know, this is our answer or our solution to providing a platform that will give institutional investors, you know, easy access to this underlying asset class. So, um, you know, we will, we're looking to raise about 5 billion rand. Um, and we will provide investors with, you know, these stable long-term returns, as I explained earlier. Um, we're looking to invest into, you know, a number of sectors, but we have identified four key economic sectors. And we believe if, if we can invest into those four sectors, that'll really have a big positive impact in terms of stimulating economic growth and really creating much needed jobs in South Africa. So the four economic sectors that we're targeting will be ICT or information, communication, technology, digital economy, um, water, transportation and energy. And um, the other thing, you know, as you've as you've touched on now, is by investing into these four economic infrastructure sectors, you know, you really start to have a big positive impact on society as a well. whole. I think if we can get the South African economy to grow at a faster pace, you know, we would be able to create lots and lots of jobs, um, absorb, you know, a lot of these unemployed individuals in the country, and um, and really have a positive impact. And not only for you know for us currently in South Africa, but really also for future generations. Right. Since the launch of the fund, uh, what kind of interest have you seen from investors? Yeah, actually, quite a bit. You know, and as I said earlier, you know, we are seeing an increased appetite for these sorts of um, investment opportunities. Um, we've already had um, commitments, or we already have commitments of more than five hundred million. As I said, we'd like to get to a fund size of about five billion. So, still quite a long way to go. But we are in advanced discussions with quite a few other very interested investors in the space. Um, like I said, I think people are, are realizing that you can get very good financial returns in this asset class in infrastructure investments while also doing um, some really good things with the money that, that's being invested. That is Oker Doya, who is the head of credit at Sunlam Investments.